pretty boy Floyd, lifestyle so flashy. Mayweather pounding, pounding. I'm the best, the creme de la creme. What a display of skill by Mayweather. I'm the champ, the world champ. They can't beat me, they better join me. Welcome to Floyd Mayweather's world. The super quickness of Floyd Mayweather produces a knockdown. A world where speed and power dominate the landscape. Brilliant, clean, hard shots for pretty boy Floyd. And where unmatched talent and skill have elevated Mayweather to the preeminent boxing force on the planet. Much of the crowd is in awe of the display that Mayweather's putting forth. Less than five months ago, the world was again treated to a Floyd Mayweather masterpiece as he dismantled boxing's human highlight film, Arturo Gatti. Right hands by Mayweather land like lasers. On this night, all the highlights belong to pretty boy Floyd. It's getting brutal in there as Mayweather fires at will. Combinations by Mayweather. Too much speed, maybe too much power too. The virtuoso performance reinforced his claim as boxing's pound for pound best. Tonight, Mayweather begins his quest for a title in a fourth different weight class, testing the waters at welterweight against Sean Bay Mitchell. Go. Mayweather turned in a performance for the ages, brutalizing Arturo Gatti to claim a 140-pound title. Tonight, Floyd moves one class up the scale to 147 to put his considerable skills to the test for the first time as a welterweight to assess Floyd Mayweather and his view from the top. Floyd Mayweather promised exactly this. He promised he would humiliate Arturo Gatti before his fans. Floyd, did the victory over Arturo Gatti do everything for you that you had hoped? Absolutely. It put me in a um, posi position to be a, just be a legend in the sport. What did it mean to you personally to finally become officially recognized as the pound for pound best? All my life I knew eventually one day um, I was gonna be the best fighter in the world. You know, I kept my fingers crossed. I said my prayers every day. I believed, my team believed in me. And, and I'm here now. I'm the truth. And yet, you are not the champion of the junior welterweight division. Ricky Hatton is recognized as the champion. I don't need a belt. A belt, a belt don't make Floyd Mayweather. I'm not really worried about what Ricky Hatton do, because he's not a risk taker like me. If he was a risk taker, we'd be fighting coming over the 19th. I was willing to go over to England to make the fight happen, but um, this guy didn't want to make the fight happen. You know me, I'm Floyd Mayweather. I never duck or dodge nobody. Floyd Mayweather is willing to fight any fighter from 154 on down. You bring him and I'll take him. You talk about fighting Deloya, you wind up fighting Brucellus, who's not even ranked. You talk then about fighting Winky Wright, and you wind up fighting Charmbay Mitchell. I mean, is there a kind of a bait and switch here? You talk about fighting stars and you wind up fighting guys who are not as big. It's not that I'm, I'm not gonna fight the big fights. It's just that um, I, ca I can't force these guys to fight me. So even though these, these guys like Winky Wright don't wanna fight, Shane Mosley don't wanna fight, Zab Judah don't wanna fight, that's not gonna put my career on hold. I have a job to do, so stay active. If you can't fight the best, you fight the guy that's right under the best. If you can't fight those guys, you fight the guy that's right up under those guys. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant performance. You've had a lot of big wins, and yet, for some reason, your popularity as an attraction has not kept up with your success in the ring. Why do you think that is? I'm not worried about being popular. I'm worried about being a legend in the sport of boxing. In 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can mark my word. They, the people will say Floyd Mayweather is the best fighter ever. What do you think are the greatest misconceptions about you? Uh, I'm just Floyd. I'm one of a kind. I feel, I feel I stand, I stand out. I'm different. Floyd switches to a southpaw stance for the second time in the fight. Third time, he says. Thank you for the correction, <laughs> Floyd. Thanks for the correction. The younger Floyd would say things that he shouldn't say. And I'm a little bit older now, so I'm a little bit wiser. It's a lot of things that I want to say that I keep in. Let's play, uh, a kind of word game. Absolutely. Come on, let's do this. That's what I like. <laughs> Bling. Love diamonds. Diamonds are a man's best friend. Your favorite possession? Life. Not the Rolls Royce, not the Hummer. 
Not the Rolls Royce, not the Ferrari, not the mansion. Life. They can have it all back. I just want to live a long time. True or false? You go to a club and spend $10,000 on champagne in a night. Has it ever happened? <laughs> uh, that's a little bit overboard. That's a little bit overboard. What, if anything, are you doing to think about, prepare for your post-fight life? I'm going to be commentating with you. Believe it. I'll be there right next to you at HBO, and I'm going to be sitting right in that seat that you're sitting in, doing that to the, fight, the fighter. I want to do it. I, hopefully, I could do it longer as you do it. Boom! Big left hook. The assumption in boxing is you're just too quick, too well schooled. You've been doing what you do <laughs> since you could stand up. Yes. Okay. But that's not the reason why I'm winning. It's not that I'm fast. It's not that I'm strong. It's not because I come from a family of fighters. It's because I'm the smartest up here. There's no fighter out there that can match me up here. What is it going to take to beat you? Me slacking, me not training hard. You beating yourself? Not in the old age. Definitely not in the old age. I mean, you're not going to beat 20-year-olds when you're 60. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I get crushed. <laughs> I get crushed like I'm crushing God. You know, I'm in my 20s beating guys in their 20s like, like they look 60. <laughs> You know, I ain't gonna throw no names out there, but they know who they is. We're gonna see the seven-year age advantage for Mayweather, a one-inch height advantage, a four-and-a-half-inch arm length advantage, when measured from the armpit to the end of the fifth. They weighed in. Floyd right on the 147-pound limit. Mitchell a pound and three-quarters under. One pound. In the interim, Mayweather has only put on one pound, while Mitchell has added nine and three-quarters pounds, suggesting that Mayweather was in absolutely perfect or sensational shape when he reached the weigh-in yesterday. He says that his walking around weight is 147 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside Floyd Mayweather's world. The super quickness of Floyd Mayweather produces a knockdown. A world where speed and power dominate the landscape. Brilliant, clean, hard shots for pretty boy Floyd. And where unmatched talent and skill have elevated Mayweather to the preeminent boxing force on the planet. Much of the crowd is in awe of the display that Mayweather's putting forth. Less than five months ago, the world was again treated to a Floyd Mayweather masterpiece as he dismantled boxing's human highlight film, Arturo Gatti. Right hands by Mayweather land like lasers. On this night, all the highlights belong to pretty boy Floyd. It's getting brutal in there as Mayweather fires at will. Combinations by Mayweather. Too much speed, maybe too much power too. The virtuoso performance reinforced his claim as boxing's pound for pound best. Tonight, at Mitchell a pound and three quarters under. One pound. In the interim, Mayweather has only put on one pound, while Mitchell has added nine and three quarters pounds, suggesting that Mayweather was in absolutely perfect or sensational shape when he reached the weigh-in yesterday. He says that his walking around weight is 147 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Sean Bay Mitchell fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and they cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! All right, thank you very much, Harold. Our ring announcer tonight is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Now let's go to Jimmy for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Rose Garden here in Portland, Oregon, as Goosen Tudor Promotions and presenting the sponsor Jordan Brand, a division of Nike, present the featured bout of the evening, pound for pound ding battle of champions, brought to you by sportsbook.com. At this time, we introduce to you our judges, as appointed by the Oregon State Boxing Commission, from Oregon, Greg Baker. From Nevada, Dwayne Ford. And also from Oregon, Jim Howard. Introducing at this time our third man in the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a welterweight special attraction. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Portland, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim. He is fighting out of our nation's capital of Washington, D.C., by way of Tacoma Park, Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 145 and one quarter pounds, with a record of 56 wins, four losses. He has 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA super lightweight champion of the world, known as the Little Big Man, introducing Shonda Mitchell. And his opponent across the ring, ready to go on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing brown trunks with black trim, hailing from Grand Rapids, Michigan, now residing in Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a perfect record of 34 wins, no losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is one of boxing's pound for pound greats, the three-time world champion and the current WBC super lightweight champion of the world, introducing the undefeated pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Steele, now to give instructions. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dress room. Question again, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Is this going to be a concert? Starring the solo artist Floyd Mayweather Jr., or will it be a contest that Charmay Mitchell makes? We shall soon find out. The word on behalf of expert commentator Roy Jones playing in pain tonight, working with a very bad cold, but hanging in. Good for you, Roy. Thank Round you. one begins. And let's see if uh, Mitchell, a boxer throughout his career, will try to do something to surprise Mayweather in the early going. Doesn't look that way. Very hard for the Leopard to change its spots. Charmbay does look heavy up top in his second appearance at 147. Floyd trying, trying to catch him right quick with a good punch to see can he go ahead and hurt him early. Floyd Mayweather, over the course of the past year, two years, has gradually and steadily increased the power on his straight right hand. Most devastating punch. Right. He's gone from being a knockout possibility to, in many instances, a knockout puncher. Well, that's what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get Coach Charbay, go ahead and turn this into a quick fight and land big punches early. Right hand to the body by Mayweather. Mayweather blocking almost all of those punches with his elbows and forearms. And as Roy Jones says, sizing up Mitchell and looking to land a big shot in the early going. I think he's looking to see which, where the punches are coming from, um, how Mitchell really operates. As he said in that interview, he is a very smart fighter along with his physical skills. I think he's trying to find out right away, can Sean May take his punch? And there's, like the, there's the question. That was the right hand that was determined to find out whether Sean Bay could take it. Mitchell took it pretty well, but not those two. Now Sean Bay begins to hold on. Mayweather's clocked him with three big shots. One left and two rights. There's another right and a left hook, and Sean Bay's in trouble. That's what he's trying to find out right away. Left 
took land solidly. And he's moving Mitchell with these punches. Right, step back, step back. Now Mitchell starts to hold his ground a little right, better. Not allowing Mayweather to land a combination by grabbing after the first big hit. Another straight right hand for Mayweather. And that hurt Mitchell. Even though it was very short. So round one is a dem demonstration of Floyd Mayweather's economical precision as he chooses only those opportunities that allow him to land big shots. <laughs> Sit there and try to trade with him. Okay? Keep that head moving and use his legs, baby. Okay? Oh, he's fighting on for fucking fear. You're doing good. Keep, You're doing good. keep walking to him. The more that motherfucker can move, he ain't going to try to fight. He's going to try to hold. PC Mayweather with the first straight right hand lead right down the barrel, which is what he was waiting for the whole time, trying to find out if Sean could take his punch. There's another right hand followed by a beautiful left hook, which knocked Shambi off balance. But Shambi surprisingly took those punches very well. And took them better and better as the round went on, which makes some sense. Punches in round one by Copybox Count. Mitchell throwing 46, but landing only three. Mayweather ignoring the jab through mostly power shots, 34 punches, and landed 13 of them. But 12 of those 13 lands were power shots. Of course, Mitchell in the southpaw stance. That's one of the reasons that Mayweather hasn't thrown many jabs. More likely to land the straight right hand, which is, in many instances, his most devastating punch. Left hook for Mayweather. Don't hold it. Break, step back, step back. You heard Buddy McGirt, chief second in the corner of Sean Bay Mitchell, not Mitchell's trainer, that's Marvin Sims. McGirt was talking in the corner and said, go use your legs. How in the world could you use your legs against a fighter with Mayweather's legs? And especially when you got a bad knee already. Because the only chance is to gamble his trade with him for a knockout. Well, what he's saying is he just doesn't want him to stay in there in the, in the range of Mayweather. Mayweather landed a right hand. Now stalking Mitchell into the corner. Sean Bay wisely slips away along the ropes and back into the center of the ring. If Mayweather can get Mitchell pinned against the ropes, he'll unleash a barrage of right hands. At least that's my prediction. <laughs> now, referee Richard Steele, I thought he yelled, no spinning. He said, don't spin him. Oh. Sean Bay throwing a straight left hand and going out to Floyd's left and spinning, getting behind Floyd. Mitchell trying to find a variety here that will throw Mayweather off. Mayweather has already demonstrated. He's not going to extend himself looking to pile up points here in the early rounds. He figures he can land something and get rid of it. Quick jab by Mayweather. Through two rounds, Sean Bay Mitchell is working, but really hasn't landed a single significant punch to try to keep Floyd Mayweather off of him. And a 
go at it at the end of the second round. As, just as I said that, Mitchell finally did land something. Oh, that's up. Immediately following this telecast, stay tuned for Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2. And in the flip that Jermaine Taylor's title-winning effort over Marad Hopkins back in July and analysis of their upcoming rematch. Tuesday, November 29, catch the next installment of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, a peek into the world of today's sports groupies. December 3 on HBO Pay-Per-View, it's the highly anticipated rematch between new middleweight champion Jermaine Taylor and the former champion Bernard Hopkins. And December 10, World Championship Boxing returns with Winky Wright taking on Sam Solomon. Mitchell landed that left hand at the end of the round. The question now is, is he going to become a little bolder? I doubt it. Combi box numbers in round two. Mayweather 13 out of 43. Sean Bay Mitchell 9 out of 57. Mitchell with a, an overhand left at the top of the round. Mayweather doesn't often get hit by punches that come from conventional angles on the rare occasions when he's been hit and momentarily wobbled by DeMarcus Corley, for instance. It was usually on a looping punch that comes from outside the visual range. Thus the advisability of trying to brawl against a guy like that. Yep, such a short fighter like Mayweather, when you're that short, you're trained to throw short punches and you're trained to defend against short punches, not wild looping punches. So the wild looping punches usually are off rhythm for him. First knockdown of the fight comes on a straight right hand. Right into the mouth of Mitchell. Beautiful double right hand at that. that Mitchell landed at the end of the second round didn't help him, it hurt him because it demonstrated to Mayweather he can take Mitchell's punch. Well, Mayweather been low with that anyway. That's why he came out and fight the fight he's fighting. He knew he could take uh, Mitchell's punch. He was just wondering, could Mitchell take his punch? Come on, break, break, break. And that's what he came to find out right away. And he makes it tough for Mitchell because Mitchell's in here. He outweighs Floyd, but he doesn't throw his big punches floor and he can't really take Floyd's big punch. Tough situation for him to be in, but he's trying. And he's trying hard. One thing Floyd Mayweather does brilliantly is to use his lead shoulder as a defensive shield when he attacks. He keeps his shoulder in a great position to protect his chin. It's very hard to find an open shot against Floyd Mayweather, even when he's coming at you. That was not a knockdown, a slip. But every time a fighter has to get up from the canvas, he expends a little bit more energy. Yep. with a good body shot after Mayweather landed an uppercut, but by and large, after dominating the first two rounds easily, Floyd Mayweather has knocked Sean Bay Mitchell down in the third round, trying to keep progressing toward a knockout victory. Floyd attacking with the straight right lead, caught him beautiful on the chin with the right lead, and down with Mitchell. With a good sneak straight right hand, straight down the pipe, which is usually the best punch against the southpaw. They see it again, straight right lead, right on the chin. Mitchell could do nothing about it. Too much quickness. Oh, 
it's amazing because the opponent knows that Mayweather's looking to throw a straight right hand in that situation, but he's so quick with it that you can't stop it anyway. Harold, how do you have it through three? Three rounds to nothing, 30 to 26. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, you got to give him an extra point for knocking Mitchell up off of his feet in the third round, and that accounts for the four-point lead by Mayweather. I got to talk about two rules real quick. Number one, Mayweather keeps that left hand across his chest, and watch him use the elbow. You see the way he raised the elbow? You can't hit a guy with an elbow. You can't lift up his jaw with an elbow. Secondly, Richard Steele allowed John Bay Mitchell to bang Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the first round on that waistband. Now, I'll tell you, I think that he should let him hit him on a waistband because it's just not a, day, a damaging blow. There it is again. One of the most assertive, assault, assertive assaults of the fight by Mitchell, who seems to realize that he's going to need to go ahead and fight if he's going to avoid simply becoming cannon fodder. Here. Exactly. If he don't start a fight, he's just going to be a punching bag, and that's what he's turning into slowly here. Incidentally, in the early part of this round, Michael Jordan made a belated entry into the arena and is seated now at ringside. Mayweather is so aware of everything that goes on around the ring that I rather suspect he knows Jordan arrived during this round. Oh, yeah, he knows. We've had situations in the past in which Floyd would hear things that I say during commentary in the fight and turn and comment to me on what I've just said, offering editorials from the ring while fighting. And Shumby seems to be tiring a little bit now. Comes a point in the fight when a veteran fighter has to decide, am I gonna really try to win this fight or am I gonna try to survive? I don't think that Mitchell can do the kind of brawling you suggested he might have to. Roy, it's like asking a, a tailor to make a car. Well, the trouble is, if you want to trade with Floyd, you've got to face his hand speed. And Mitchell has gotten hit with another hard right hand here that's setting up more stuff along the ropes. And while Mitchell admirably is firing back and trying to fight, he's getting hit too much. Yep, and he started leaving punches, and the ropes are catching his hands a lot of time when he's leaving punches. And that's not good for him because he's not going to catch Floyd with those leaving punches when Floyd's that close to him. from a push, Mayweather can still <laughs> land a right hand in close quarters. Keep walking that motherfucker down. Keep walking him down. When you get close to him, then you let your hands go. But keep walking and keep trying to throw the right hand to the body. Keep, he ain't doing what trying to survive. We gonna keep walking his ass down. How you feel? Good, okay. He turning this man. You don't have to bet straight up. I'm done, buddy. Don't load up, man. You gotta let your hands go, and right. you gotta stay off the ropes, babe. Right, right. Just keep him turning. Okay. Don't stay in the, Don't go straight back. He see Floyd on the attack with the right hand, followed by left hook and another right hand. Sean just got his hands high. That body shot hurt him a little bit, but he kept his hands high, defended his head real well on that. And there's the aforementioned Jordan at ringside. Bluetooth technology visible in the left ear. I wonder how many people have the number. <laughs> no, you do. Total punches through four. Mayweather 58 out of 162. Mitchell 24 out of 196. John Bay Mitchell throwing more points than Floyd Mayweather, but getting hit a lot more as well. <laughs> as 
as much as this fight was criticized by some on the web and some boxing writers, Mitchell certainly hasn't been the same kind of sitting duck for Mayweather's stuff that Artura Gatti was in the big pay-per-view fight back in June. No, I think he's had, a, he's had a good showing for himself so far. A lot of people didn't expect him to do this well. I think he's had a very good showing for himself. It's Mayweather right along the belt line. Richard Steele says keep him up. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Pretty good idea to keep hitting that belt line if he can. Closest Floyd Mayweather ever came to losing a professional fight is when he was strafed along the ropes through the latter stages of his first bout with Jose Luis Castillo, and Castillo got to his ribcage. But that's not Sean Bay's style. Sean Bay is a boxer. He's not accustomed to putting that type of pressure on the floor in the other side. Sean Bay trying to rake Mayweather over the top with left hands. Mayweather just picking his spots, waiting patiently, being efficient, landing power punches when he can, mostly hard right hands. It looked to me as though Mayweather had decided to go out and look for a knockout and gave Sean Bay some opportunities. Mayweather landed a stunning left hook. Punching it out. Great step back. And he's still looking for a knockout. Mayweather in a southpaw stance now. Changing the angle slightly, giving himself a landed jab, and then raking Sean Bay Mitchell with a great straight left hand. I think that left hand hurt him. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many southpaws that throw it better than that. <laughs> Floyd goes back to the right hand stance and stings Mitchell with one more right before the end of the round. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for the premiere of Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2, a documentary-style look back at the circumstances surrounding Taylor's controversial decision over Hopkins back in July, and a look ahead to their upcoming rematch. The only regret I have for the first fight is that when I had him hurt, I didn't stop him. I didn't finish him, and I will finish him this time. I feel like I still have something to prove. I feel like I'm going in there, I'm fighting for my belts all over again. I, I have to bring those belts home with me again. Down to Taylor Hopkins 2, premiering tonight, immediately following this telecast. Power punches through round five, Mayweather 56 out of 133, Mitchell 24 out of 125. Sean Bay Mitchell, who threw 81 punches per round in his last fight against Chris Smith, managing to average 49 punches per round here, which is a pretty good punch out punch put against Mayweather. Yeah, he couldn't get off at all. But here he has to keep his hands at home on defense a lot because Florida's throwing some of the punches at him. Like that. Another blistering straight right hand from Mayweather. He started to mix the left hook in a little bit more in the last couple of rounds. And by mixing the left hook in more, he set up the right hand again. That was a hard right hand to the body. Don't often see that. Mayweather has great discipline and great intuition in the ring. That's where that right hand to the body comes from. Watch your head. Banging of heads. Mayweather grimaced and keeps feeling his right eyebrow to see whether there's blood. There's none. He comes out and rakes Mitchell with a left hook. Good left hook by Floyd. Quick, precise. Hitting a moving target as it's coming in. <laughs> Shumbe can't win this fight on the outside like this. I don't know why he won't just go ahead and try to fight because he's getting picked apart out here. Well, do you think that Mayweather has the power to impose himself on a real strong welterweight? Yes, he Second does. Second knockdown. 
This time, the knockdown is on a body shot. We've seen a lot of knockouts on body shots in recent years. Mitchell's in no hurry to get up, and that's that. I think Richard Steele saw the territory in front of us. Mitchell tried, but he was behind. If this round had counted, he'd be behind um, eight points in six rounds. So how close was he really? Not close at all. You think with one punch, Roy, he can hurt a strong weight? Uh, not a full fledged welterweight. He's just taking an accumulation like he's been doing. Uh, but Sean Bennett take his punch that well showed you that a person that's been in the work with the division will take his punch a little bit better than that. Let's make it specific. Should he fight Antonio Margarito, who yeah, is the should. strongest of the welterweights, I think? Yeah, he should. There was a straight right hand to the body. Sean Bennett was not ready for that punch. He already was getting very fatigued, and he knew it wouldn't be but a matter of time at this point. Another look. Straight right hand to the body. Best punch against the southpaw. Caught him when he wasn't ready. Caught him right in the middle of the punch, too. Roy Jones against Virgil Hill. Arturo Gatti against Leonard Doreen. Quite a number of body shot knockouts in recent years on this telecast. And there's another one as Floyd Mayweather finally puts Charm Bay Mitchell away in the sixth round with a right hand body shot. Mayweather dominating the fight both from the perspective of his boxing skill and his punching power. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. now for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, five seconds in round number six. A referee in charge, Richard Steele, reaches the count of two. What they saw. A final look at CompuBox numbers, Mayweather versus Mitchell. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. landing at about a 40% rate compared to about a 10% rate for the opponent, Mitchell. Power punching numbers, and uh, here Mayweather's connect percentage goes up, as does Mitchell's marginally. But at the end of the day, 65 to 24 in landed power punches. And Mayweather's punches by far the harder Really, Mitchell only landed two overhand lefts that mattered in the fight. Let's go to Larry Merchant standing by with the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, Floyd Mayweather. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Floyd. It looked as though you came out determined to get a knockout. You weren't just pretty boy, you wanted to be tough boy tonight. Well, first off, I want to thank God for this victory. You know, thank, thank Jordan Brand and Nike. Thank Al Hammond and thank Team Mayweather. You know, without, without them, all this wouldn't be possible. And, you know, after coming off the Arturo Gotti win, I tried to come out, and yes, I did tonight, and tried to rush the knockout, and I got hit with a couple of shots that I feel I shouldn't got hit with tonight. But, you know, I still came out victorious. Did he ever sting you? Oh, uh, Sean Bay hit me with a good shot. I mean, I mean, it's not a shot I never felt before, but Sean Bay's a good fighter. Like I said before, he only had two losses in the last 12 years, so that's why we took the fight. We tried to fight all the main fighters, but then none of those guys want to fight us, so we fought Sean Bay. All right. Why the body shots? Was he just, did you make him so conscious of the head shots that he was leaving himself well, open? Actually, um, uh, Sean Bay kind of surprised me. He, you know, he had a good head movement. So I see if a guy, uh, you know, the body can't move, but the head can move. So I took my time tonight, uh, stayed relaxed. And uh, uh, my Uncle Roger told me to go to the body. And uh, I went to the body, and tonight I got the victory. Would you have beaten Uncle Roger in his prime? Uh, that would have been a great fight. You know, I got a lot of respect for my Uncle Roger. You know, I want to thank you for coming out to my house doing an interview. Thank HBO, because without all you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, okay. There's been some talk of you fighting Zab Judah next. What uh -huh. stands in the way? Uh, like I said before, uh, we look, we want to fight Zab Judah. I've been asked for that fight uh, after the Arturo Gotti fight. We, uh, me and, uh, actually, me and Zab supposed to have fought tonight. Uh, but, you know, me and Sean Bay end up fighting. But like I said before, I want to fight the best they got there. I would love to fight Zab Judah. I, I, know, love to fight. I know you say this, but it appears that when you get below that, what you're saying is, I'll fight him if I get two thirds or three quarters of the money, and they say I'm not going to give you that. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm not here to talk about money. I'm just here to talk about uh, fighting the best they got out there. And, and right now, Zab is a, is, a, is a good fighter. That's a good fight for me. Uh, Winky Wright's a good fight for me. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of big names. Oscar De La Hoya this summer. So there's a lot of big fights out there. You know, I'm trying to put this fight together with Zab. But if it don't fall through, it don't matter who I fight. Thank you very much. Congratulations Thank you. again, Appreciate Floyd. It. And just. Uh, just a final thought. Uh